Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Augusto Argandonia Fine Arts. Anytime in this narrated tutorial, you can click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. And I would also appreciate your comments in regards to this particular painting and for that matter, any of the paintings in my channel. I have been reading uh, some of the comments, uh, some very good positive comments from my subscribers. Thank you very much. I enjoy reading your comments and I'm very happy to know that uh, you enjoy my paintings. If you want to learn about my virtual classes or want to see my paintings, you may do so in my website at aafinearts.com. This tutorial is about how to paint a beach scene with watercolors. This is not going to be just uh, any type, any type of uh, beach image with palm trees and things like that. Something like I, I painted in the past on um, some of my tutorials. For this uh, particular scene, I'm going to paint something that is uh, seen quite a bit here in South Florida, uh, South Florida beaches, and it's it's the sea grapes. The sea grape is a plant that, um, it's a very beautiful plant. It grows pretty much wild, although uh, one can purchase it at nurseries and grow it as a hedge or as a tree. And the reason it's called sea grape is because it produces a fruit uh, that looks pretty much like grapes on a vine. In fact, uh, early settlers here in Florida used the fruit to make a, a jelly. Um, this particular plant, uh, most of the year is uh, very bright, uh, beautiful, warm greens, very tropical looking greens. But during tourist season, uh, especially January, February, March, the leaves turn colors, rusts, almost reddish colors, yellows, browns, and so forth. And of course, still some greens. So that's the way I'm going to paint it. It's a very beautiful plant. Um, so without much ado, I'm gonna go ahead and do the fun part of this tutorial, and that is the painting part. I get myself situated here on my the drawing board on my studio. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start by painting the sky. I'm going to add a quite a bit of water. Uh, by the way, I paint on, uh, on uh, my, the paper of my, that I prefer is a uh, 140-pound cold press bright white watercolor paper. So I'm going over the, the some of the grapes, sea grapes that are going to be uh, open by the sky. I'm adding water to the entire area. And it's going to be a fairly smooth sky. There will be some clouds, but for the most part, it's going to be just blue. So I'm going to make sure that I'm everything is covered. I'm paint, bringing the water just above, just ahead above the horizon line. So now uh, I'm going to make a nice rich mixture of manganese blue and uh, ultramarine blue. The combination of both blues makes a, for a very beautiful sky color. The ultramarine has it's a very deep blue and it's combined with the, with the manganese which has a little bit of green in it, makes it for a beautiful blues and uh, here we go and um, on that wet paper i'm going to add a little bit more of the old copper or ultramarine uh, there's that's beautiful blue there yeah i paint uh, 
a lot with the flat brushes. I, I have some very nice round brushes, but I kind of prefer the flat brushes. But uh, the sea grapes, are you going to see me painting with the uh, round brushes. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue over here and get some of those white clouds. And towards the horizon, I'm going to add a little bit of blue just above the horizon line too. Not too much, not as dark as over here. And get some of the colors of the blue into some areas of where the paper is almost dry, so you can end up with a little bit of a hard edge, which is fine. And in other areas, it will still be soft. I'm going to have a little bit more of the manganese in these areas over here. There we are. The paper is beginning to dry quite fast, so I'm going to start adding a little bit more color right here. Get some of that wispy effect of the clouds, like that. There, okay, that's... I'm going to get rid of that shape. Okay, there we are. That's good. And okay, that's enough. And that's enough for the sky. I'm going to smooth this area up a little bit. There we are. That's it. Beautiful sky. Okay, so some of the beaches here in southwest Florida, the sand is um, about 90% quartz crystal, which makes the sun very, very bright. And it's white, it looks like a granulated salt or sugar. And uh, even in the, in the middle of the summer, which is about now, um, with the temperature, the ambient temperature may be about 95 degrees, the sand is cool. It's absolutely wonderful to walk on that sand because it feels nice and cool. And it's like walking on talcum powder. Very beautiful sand. Okay, so even though that is that that sand is pretty much white, I'm gonna add a little bit, a few touches of color to show footsteps disturbing the sand here. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to the sand area, like that. Maybe a little bit more. There, over here like that. I'm going to create a nice path over here. Uh, and I'm going to ma make a mixture of uh, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Make a nice, beautiful gray. And with that mixture, I'm going to bring up a few strokes like that. Maybe a little bit more of the brown ma matter. I meant to say brown matter, not brown umber. Brown matter. There. A little bit of that. Some over here. Like that. Some over here too. There, like that. That's about it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm a little bit more ultramarine on my mixture of this area here. Like that. Paper is dry there, so I'm going to bring a little bit of water. And like that. And that's about it. I'm going to leave it on, leave it to dry. My sky is beginning to dry, so I'm going to wait a little bit. While that is, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to change brushes to. My round brush, this is a number 10 round brush. It's a very nice brush. And uh, I'm going to make a mixture. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of water here. Like that. And I'm going to make a nice mixture of uh, raw sienna. with a touch of uh, 
cerulean blue. And with that, I'm gonna bring some of that into this area, this area, the wet, wet area. I think I'm gonna wet the paper a little bit more. I want this soft. Okay. So I'm gonna make, uh, like I said, a rich mixture of the raw sienna with a little bit of a little bit of aureole in yellow and cerulean blue. Here, and I'm gonna bring in some of those colors here of these grasses that are gonna be in this area. Yeah, like that. Now I'm gonna make a mixture of uh, raw amber. I'm gonna change from raw sienna to raw amber with the cerulean blue. And the, the paper is almost beginning to dry, so this is the good time to do this. I get the color and the softness of those grasses. And I'm going over here. There we are. Nice and soft, nice effect there like that. I'm going to come over here. more of the raw amber. Uh, this time I'm going to mix with uh, a little bit of uh, undersea green for a darker green. I'm holding the brush like this. I'm going to go ahead and do the, some of the show independent individual grasses. And coming over here and holding some of those grasses growing out of the sand creating this little path, like that. Now I'm gonna make a darker mixture of those colors. I'm gonna bring in also sunburnt amber this time with the undersea green and make a much darker mixture. Well, the paper is still kind of damp, but it's not wet. Now I have more control, like that. There, okay, I'll let that dry. Now, I was waiting for, waiting for the sky to dry because I'm not paint the water in some areas, especially over here. But before I do that, I'm also going to wet this other area, bring a little bit of water here. Okay, for the, create a little path. And I'm gonna go back and do the, the grasses there too. Roll raw amber and uh, undersea green. There, yeah, like that. I'm gonna change brushes. I'm gonna use a flat brush for that. Go to the raw amber, a little bit of undersea green. And on that wet paper, I'm gonna barely touch the paper like this. And that create the little path. Bring a little bit more of those colors. Add a little bit of, of aureole and yellow into that mix. And uh, when the paper is wet there, I'm gonna go ahead and do the grasses like that. There we are, there. When the paper is wet, it, it, uh, it's soft. When the, when the paper is dry, it's crisp colors. 
a little bit more burnt amber on the Anderson green. And come over here and do those grasses like that. See? There, like that. There's the little path. Bring some of the grasses growing out of the sand and this path. Maybe do some darker areas over here. Like I said, where the paper is wet or damp, it's nice and soft, otherwise it's nice and crisp. Start adding the darker values for this, those grasses, like that. There, I'm gonna come back over here and do the same thing. So the areas that are papers pretty much almost dry here, so I'm, I'm, I can do this. There, there are those really beautiful grasses. And that path is pretty much done. There. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. Um, I think I'm going to, yeah, before I do paint the water, I'm gonna go ahead and do the sea grapes. And for the sea grapes, I'm gonna use a nice round brush. This is a, a number 12. This, this brush is really beautiful. It, hold, it has a nice tip and it holds quite a bit of water and also quite a bit of pigment. So I'm gonna get some, uh, make different mixtures of color in my palette. Start with the uh, aureole in yellow and raw sienna with some cerulean blue. And I think I might do, I might also combine with uh, some uh, new gamboge, which is a really beautiful yellow. Very transparent, very, very beautiful yellow. I'm gonna use, put some of that new gamboge in my palette. It doesn't take much, much. It's a very strong color, so be, be careful with that. Rubbing of that because I'm gonna paint this. See grapes are uh, like the colors of the way they are in the in the winter. So I'm gonna start by adding the the basic background color. Um, the shapes of the sea grape leaves like that. My other brush might work, may work better. Yeah, this will work. Yeah, that's better. This, because those they are very big leaves, but probably six to nine inches in diameter, for the most part. I know. I'm also gonna bring in some. Burnt sienna into that mixture. Like I said, they grow in different colors in that time of the year. Like bring some uh, aureole in yellow with uh, manganese blue. Makes a really nice, bright, tropical looking green. Like that. I'm gonna bring some of the more stronger colors over here and bring that into this area. Like that. Bring some bone sienna to some areas like this. Blend the colors on the paper. A little bit stronger. That. And some uh, permanent sub green with new gamboge. A really beautiful green. There we are. Got some of the leaves over here. That's the green that looks mo most, mostly in the sea grapes there. Like that. I'm gonna make 
a richer mixture of new gambos and ultramarine blue. It makes a really beautiful deep green too. There we are. Also, I'm going to bring in some brown matter with a touch of burnt amber or some of the reddish browns. Sienna this time. Come over here. There we are. And I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. I'm going to add a little bit of water to some areas, some color, and some straight raw sienna with a little bit of uh, brown matter. Like that. Start getting some of the outside leaves, a little bit more aureole and yellow with the ultramarine blue. by itself with some of the yellow effects of these colors of these leaves like that I'm going to combine that with some uh, conacridone gold deep and get some of those colors over here like that I'm going to get a little bit, a little bit of those colors over here too Now I need some dark green, so I'm going to use some um, undersea green with the uh, new gamboge. doing the darker areas of the leaves I'm also going to use some burnt amber with that mixture burnt amber and undersea green to get some of the really dark areas of the leaves but before I do that I'm going to add a little bit of water here there get some of those darker colors there we are a little bit more of the undersea green and the burnt amber this time I'm going to start adding some paints gray to get some of this really dark the areas of the within the inside of the plant where the, the leaves are pretty much in the shade, like that. There we are. Some of that over here too. And the change greens to the permanent sub green with ultramarine blue for some of the cooler greens. There. Like 
that. See, I'm gonna leave that alone now. I'm gonna let that dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna go back to my uh, flat brush, pick up some burnt amber, some of the under sea green, the dark greenish brown color and separating the bristles like this. My, my brush is almost dry. I'm gonna come over here and do a little bit more of those grasses, these edges, where they combine with the, with, the, with, the, with the sea grapes. I don't want to separate them too much because they, you know, these sea grapes grow in, in between the grasses. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna add a little bit of, uh, Paints gray to that mixture and make some of these areas of the grasses a little darker. There we are. There, that's it. There we are. There. Some of that here too. Combine them. There we are. There, now they don't look separated. A little bit more of a Burnt amber and the sea green and connect these grasses with the sea grapes. Like that. Okay, now they don't look separated. Now we're bringing some of those grasses here too. Yeah, like that into that path. Some of little taller grasses over here. A little bit over here. And there, that's it. Okay, so now I can paint the I can paint the water. And for the water, I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give the water that beautiful color of the Gulf of Mexico. And combined with these nice colors that I have over here, it's gonna really stand out beautifully. And here it goes. The Gulf of Mexico this time of the year looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm using a cobalt turquoise, but I'm gonna add a tad, tad bit of uh, raw sienna to that. And a greenish color. There we are. I'm gonna bring some manganese blue to that mixture. And here we go. That's the color of the Gulf of Mexico. Leave a little, leave a little bit of a crest of waves. There, like that. Come down over here towards the beach. And the colors there. And I'm gonna bring in a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue by itself. Ultramarine blue and paints gray. And the horizon, you see a darker coloration like that. A little bit more of the ultramarine. There's that beautiful colors of the Gulf of Mexico here in Southwest Florida. There. And that's pretty much it for that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and while that's drying, I'm gonna start adding a little bit more of the darker greens for the leaves over here. This is paper's almost dry, it's still kind of damp. There, like that. Not too much. A little bit more of those greens over here. 
and uh, I'm gonna get a little bit more of the burnt amber with this green and do a little bit of that over here like that same thing over here Also going to get some um, some of the quinacrid on gold deep and make this a little brighter. Some of these leaves there, like that. I'm also going to bring in some quinacrid on sienna for some of the a little bit more reddish. No, that's too much. I'm going to leave that alone. I think I'm going to use the burn sienna instead. Yep, burn sienna will be much better. There. A little bit of the burnt amber mixed with the burn sienna. Yeah. There we are. Okay. Uh, now, I will um, let this dry. While it's drying, I'm going to add some uh, footsteps into the sand in this path. I'm going to go and do make the mixture that I started with, with the brown matter and ultramarine. Make a nice gray. And uh, I'm gonna dampen the paper so these footsteps will kind of just barely touch the paper, just dampen it a little bit, not much. Like that. And with that mixture, I'm gonna soft mixture of those colors. I'm gonna do this footsteps. Uh, so this, this, the footsteps kind of disturb the sand like that. There. I'm going to put a little bit of those areas over here too, where the sand is kind of disturbed a little bit. Soften some of those areas there like that. Not much, just a little bit. And also, I think I'm going to add a little bit more vibrant color to that water. There. There, that's that. There we go. That's, that's good. I don't want that hard edge here. I'm going to soften it. There. See all these little white specks that I left from the white paper? Those are the crests of the little waves that are coming onto the, onto the shore. Now, um, I'm going to get a rich mixture of ultramarine and the, and the sea green and make the paper is almost dry here. I'm going to darken some of these areas. Like that. Something over here. So find some edges. Darken some of the areas. Yeah. yeah, like that. Right, so now I'm going to take a, a small round brush like this and yeah, make a nice mixture of uh, sepia with uh, cobalt blue. 
make a nice gray. Because the branches from that sea gray, but they are not brown. They're kind of white gray tone. So I'm gonna come over here and do some of those. They go in different directions. Like that. A little bit more of the sepia. Now wait for this to dry some before I do more. Like that. A bit more of the cobalt blue. Some over here. Change brushes and I'll use my rigged brush and cobalt blue, a little bit more sepia. Yeah, the rigged brush would be better here. There we are. That's better. Yeah. Very much better. More cobalt blue. Come over here. That. They go in different directions. They don't always, they're not necessarily, they don't grow necessarily upwards. They just all over the place. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this brush and uh, this paper is, um, let's see, it's almost dry. I'm going to wait a little bit more. I'm going to make a mixture of uh, opaque, white opaque watercolor with that cobalt blue on the sepia. Get some of the white there and I'll make go to my palette. A little bit of the cobalt blue, a little bit of the sepia. and a little bit more of the white. There. And do some of that because some of this sea grape uh, branches are almost white. They grow in different directions. Touch a bit of water in my brush. There we are. There. Something over here. A 
little bit more white over here. There. And that's enough. And uh, close this. And right now I'm going to get this gray that's in my palette already. I'm going to add a little bit more sepia to it. Uh, a little bit of ultramarine this time and with that I'm gonna make I'm gonna paint some of the ever-present seagulls Some, some artists paint them like a V. They're not, they're not like a V. They, they have a shape like this. The, the, lead, the, the wings kind of fall down and give a little bit of a body there. Just a little bit of a body there. And some are closer to the beach. Others are a little bit further. So all you see is little dots here and there. There. And that's it. So now, the last thing that I will do here is uh, get a smaller brush, get some ultramarine, a little bit of uh, brown matter, and I'm going to sign it right here. And a member of the Florida Sun Coast Water Color Society. There we are. Um, lastly, I will take a smaller uh, flat brush, remove most of the moisture, and I'm going to soften some of this a little bit. It's kind of too harsh. There we are. There, yeah. soften some of this grasses. There, like that. So now I'm gonna remove the tape. I'm gonna bring a darker board and you're gonna see how this looks like. Uh, but for, before I do that, I will bring a, I know I can see that I'm missing some color here from this sea grapes. I'm gonna use some brown matter. Uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of sepia. I get a little darker brown there. There, like that. There. A few touches here and there, too. There, like that. So I'll remove the tape. Now, on this scene, the, the sun is coming from from behind so i'm not doing any shadows because the shadows will be on the other side on the beach side like that This top one is always hard to get smooth. Yeah, here it goes. And here comes the dark board. And there it is. I'm gonna minimize it. There we are. And there it is. Sea grapes in, the, in February at the beach in Southwest Florida. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy my painting. And please visit my website at aafinearts.com where you will see information about my virtual classes and a selection of my paintings and prints. Again, thank you for watching this tutorial. Until next time.